Hey, hey, guys, what is going on? This is Unlike the Waffle here, and welcome back to Command Line, my Minecraft tutorial series in which I show you interesting and fun things you can do with command blocks in vanilla Minecraft. Oh, now let me go catch my breath, and let's check out what we got here. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you just love it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Basically, what we have today is a spick, a spick, a pick, that lets you smelt the ores as you mine them, so that way you don't have to waste any resources by cooking them after you already mine them. So let's just put our saves into game mode zero, which is survival. And then we can just start mining these, and we get the ingots directly from the ores. We don't have to worry about smelting them whatsoever. They even drop a nice fire effect when they first get smelted, because they're nice and hot from our fantastic pick. Let's just clear that and put ourselves back into creative mode and let's check this out. First thing that you need to do is get yourself a command block. You can do that by clicking with your middle mouse button or your scroll wheel when you are in creative mode and you got the command block right there. However, if you don't have that already in your world, then what you will have to do is you need to type in give then your username or at p or at a either one will work and then you're going to give yourself c-o-m-m -M, press tab to complete that and that gives you a command block isn't that beautiful but the very first command that we're going to be needing is the thing that actually gives you the pick itself what we have here is giving at the nearest player at p you can also use at a and that works fine too an iron pickaxe. This can be changed to any pickaxe, stone or better, that any, pretty much any pickaxe will drop an iron ingot when it mines. Stone will, I mean, stone I think is the lowest one that will. Wooden won't drop an iron, I don't think. Could be wrong about that. But let's just be safe and say iron pickaxe is perfect for this. Besides, will we gain plenty of iron from this, huh? We're going to be giving ourselves one of those at a, com at a damage value of zero, so it is completely healed. Then we're also naming that Smelting Pick. You can name that whatever you want, but you will have to change it later as you will see. And then we're also adding a scoreboard. This scoreboard is an objective and we're adding it. It is a dummy objective and it is named Ingot. You can change that to whatever name you want as well, but once again, you'll have to change that later on. Then we're just for the sake of being safe, setting that scoreboard to zero by typing scoreboard players. Then we're setting that for every player to a score of zero for any, for all command, for all scores on the ingot category. You get what I mean. And then for this contraption, the first thing we need is a fill or set block, block uh, clock. What we are going to start off with is the very bottom clock right here, which is set blocking, setting the block right above it, same spot, just right above it, to clay. And then we're hitting zero for the damage value and replace, because otherwise if it's you don't have to replace there, it could potentially make a lot of sound, and we don't really want that now, do we? And then we come up two blocks from that, place another command block with this command inside of it, which is set, setting the block right below it, same block as before, targeting. And except that that one is being set to redstone block instead of clay. That runs at 20 times a second, so it's a pretty fast clock. And then two, blo two blocks above that one, we're setting the block right below that, which is pretty much the exact same command as right there, but this time we're changing it to clay. This is how everything stops, how you shut off the clock. And now, nothing runs. Start it up again, just place a block right in there, and you are good to go. And then this command right here, this is to test for the pick being in your inventory and active. So we're testing for any player with a selected item slot of zero. That means that your whatever is in your hand, that is your active slot. Like right now, we are on zero. Then this is slot one, slot two, slot three, all the way up to eight right there. You can change that number to whatever you want. It does not have to be zero, but you will also have to change that number to that same slot. You also can't make it higher than 8 because otherwise you can't make any of those slots in there active. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. And then we are also testing for our inventory, slot 0B, which is that slot right there as well. Same slot that we are targeting for the active slot. 
and we are testing for anything in there named Smelting Pick. You can put anything in there named Smelting Pick and it will activate this clock. Or this command, this. It'll activate this. <laughs> Best way I can put that. However, it won't really turn anything into ingots immediately if there is no iron ore dropped. So, you'll want a pick named Smelting Pick instead of anything else because nothing else besides picks, stone or better, will drop iron ore. And we want that. And this is just testing that it is true. And when it is true, it is activating this command, which is setting the block 1 towards negative x and 3 towards positive z, same y plane. And it is setting that block to redstone block, just like we see over here. And what block that is targeting is this one right here. It is turning on this clock, as we can see right here. When that is true, then we'll activate that and turn off the redstone torch. When it is untrue, it will stop activating this, turn the redstone torch back on, which will in turn activate this command, which is exactly the same. However, because it is two blocks up from that one, then it is currently, then it will be activating, or setting that, that block right there to redstone block, which turns off the clock as we've seen already. See? Everything is turned off. Turned on. Turned off. Very good. Good lesson. And then what this clock is, is pretty much exactly the same as over here, except that this time it is a fill clock instead of set block, because we want it to extend out towards negative x of one block. So it, the only changes between that one and this one is that we are filling the block right below this one and one towards negative x with a redstone block, and the one below that is exactly the same, except that it is positive y instead of negative y, because we want it above that block, not below it. But right here, this couple sets of commands right here is the workhorse of this entire setup. What this is, is messing around with the scoreboard for the ingot score. Yeah, that makes sense. It is setting for all players and all entities typed uh, type item to one. It is setting the ingot for all entities that are type item, not any mob or player but only dropped items such as that to one. However, we don't want everything in the world turning to iron ingots because otherwise that feels just a little bit cheaty. So we are specifically targeting an item, uh, which is iron ore. Nothing else will work here. Only the iron ores will get changed to the iron ingots. Everything else in the world just gets staying the same. Just gets staying the same. Yep, that makes sense. <laughs> And then this one down here is activating after that one, technically, and it is changing the entity data for that. It is targeting all entities that have a score for ingot of one. And because of this one up here, we know that that will only be targeting iron ores because nothing else gets a score of ingot at all. And we are changing that to iron ingot instead of iron ore. And we are changing that to a count of one because, well, when you smelt iron ores, then you only get one ingot per ore, and we want to keep it as good as possible, or as close as possible to the actual way. You can change it to how ma however many count you want, up to 64, but it feels a little bit cheaty if you go for 64 per ore. I don't feel like doing that myself. Once again, you can do that as much as you want, and that is pretty much the entire command right there. However, I've noticed that or what I like to do is because that feels just a little bit like basic doing it like that. Then I, whoops, that's a little bit of lag. Then I like to add a little bit of fire to things to make it look like it just came out of a furnace. So what we're going to do is drop some uh, iron ores right there. That works. And then make sure that the pick is in slot zero and it is active. And you can see that it immediately changes to an ingot with flames on the bottom. However, once you pick it up, all that data goes away and it is just a plain ingot now and will not activate any kind of flame particle. You don't have to have the particle at all. It is not necessary, but it looks a lot better. And so to make that particle, what you are doing is executing it at all items, all entities that are an item and have a score of, uh, for the ingot of one only not zero or two but one only and because of those commands right up here we know that that is only iron ores 
And thusly, when it gets changed, it will also be iron ingots. The ones that get changed, not the ones that get thrown on the ground. That is relative commands to exactly where that thing is. Then it is making a particle, the flame type. Same relative commands as before. And zero blocks in every direction, X, Y, and Z. It is making it a speed of 0 0.01, because otherwise, if it is like one or so, it just the flames go everywhere. They get blown out. It makes it seem like an explosion. It's beautiful. But that's not what we want for this. We want it to be nice and tight and clustered. But this command, every time it is activated, only summons one particle. But because this is running at 20 times a second, because of this clock, well, then that's just a heck of a lot of particles. As you can see here, when we drop this iron ore, you see that's a fair amount of particles right there, and just enough to give it that kind of hot feeling. Perfect for this. And then this force, not necessary because you're probably going to be mining tight quarters, but if you were to get outside of 8, 16 blocks away, then you were able to see, you would not be able to see that particle, so that's why we add the force in. So that way you can see it from as far away as you can possibly see. But that is the entire command right here. I really hope that you enjoyed this command uh, setup, and if you did, you can download it for yourself and check it out and add it to your world if you so wish. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, and I really hope that you did, please feel free to leave a like and a comment below, and I will see you next time. So long, everyone.